I believe that during the course of our life, there are certain times when we feel like we are not victorious. Yes, our mouths can say, and sometimes even our body language can say that we are victorious. But the truth is, if you search for the truth, you dig it, dig for it in your heart, you will realize, some of us, that we're really not living in victory. The enemy is really overcoming. I need to establish why is it that he overcomes us? Why is it that our life continuously gets bogged down with problems and we never overcome? I need to get to the bottom of that and everything has to do with the spirit world. So I want you to pay very careful attention. Even though you might have heard this before, some of you, that came for the teaching, I want you to pay special attention. You can never hear it more than you can never hear it more than once and still not be satisfied. So the Spirit of God is the one needs to speak to you this morning. I want you to pay very special, special attention. Nice to see Chappy here after you're up. See you're still in the house of the Lord. Even though you heard this message, me teach it in a brief way. It's good to see you here. The book First, let me just start. We put adverts on television, adverts in the paper, and there's something, a groundbreaking spiritual phenomenon that seems to be eluding people. I want you to know that there is a relationship between certain symptoms that you experience and your run of bad luck. There is a relationship. The symptoms that you experience that we talked about in the paper, many of you might be going through it right now, especially those that came for some assistance, is headaches. Men don't normally succumb to headaches so much, but it's the women that have a lot of headaches. And you went to your neurosurgeon and your doctors and you took your grandpas and you took your disciplines and it goes away for a little while but it doesn't solve the problem. Now, disprin and medicine, when you take disprin, Rose, you'll know this, right? It doesn't take the pain away, it numbs the nerve. That's what disprin does, if you didn't know. Grandpa does the same thing. So if you have a nerve that's pulsating, you'll have a headache. If you take disprin, it numbs the nerve, so you don't feel the pain. It's like an anesthetic. It doesn't take the source of the pain away. And therefore, after you take discipline, it might solve it for a little while and then the headache is back. Some headaches are so severe, it becomes migraines where you like want to spew. Sometimes you can't function. You can't work and you can't think. It gets progressively worse. That's one symptom. Sometimes it's a medical problem where you can go to a doctor and you can sort something out and you can get healed. But most of the time, it is spiritual in nature. Now, we're going to link this. The next symptom that you will have is you'll have some bad dreams. You know, scientists and doctors and all these big shots, they try to put people inside a room, plug things to their head, try to see their dream, and, and they still can't figure out what a dream is. They still haven't found out the phenomenon of a dream. Now, when you have a spiritual problem, you will have dreams. These dreams are very specific. They're not isolated. You'll have dreams of snakes, different colors, different kinds. Some want to bite you, some just lying around. You will also have dreams of people chasing you, trying to kill you. Some will have knives and some will have guns and they will be running after you. Depends on various things why certain types of people chasing you, you will have. You will have dreams of people that have passed away. Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your friend, 
that hanged himself in school. Somebody that died in an accident. Somebody you know. Bible calls that familiar spirits. If you underline that word familiar, it comes from the word family. Means people that you know that passed away. Certain nights you'll have dreams. Not just one off. Once in 10 years you dreamt, oh, I dreamt about my grandfather once, long time ago. No, no. This is a repetitive thing. You'll have dream today. Three days will pass. You'll have another dream. Next week you'll have another dream. It's a repetitive thing. These signs... If you have any one of these signs, men will have dreams that they're falling. You know, they're falling all of a sudden before they get up. Before they actually hit the ground and die in their dream, they get up. That's, but men hardly remember their dreams now. So we're focusing all these dreams on the woman mainly. Sometimes when you're sitting alone, nobody's in the room. Maybe you're brushing your hair. Or you're standing in the kitchen and you're washing dishes. Some of you that don't have dishwasher. You're washing the dishes and then you'll see like a, a shadow pass you. And then you look. Now you know nobody's there. Ronnie's gone to work now. He's not, he's not at home. And all the children are in school. You look now. Who's passed me now? You'll see shadows. Certain times. Certain times when you're sleeping in the night, you'll have a sense you can't see this. You can't put a microscope and analyze this. You, your spirit will sense this. Something in the room. Something's there. But you can't. You, you talk to people and if you tell your neighbor, they'll think, Oh God, I'm always gone cuckoos now. I think. So you're afraid to tell anybody what you're experiencing. And, and these symptoms, I want you to take it very, very serious. This is not a playing thing. You are now under spiritual attack. And when some people contact us via our website and email and Facebook, they ask us, we're not sure whether what we're experiencing, these dreams and all, whether it's related to anything, whether it's important. Let me tell you, it is the most important thing. That is directly related to the bad luck. I hate to use that word. It's such an such a old-fashioned word. Pastor John and uh, Brother Singh will know that word very well. We don't like to use that word these days. But it's bad luck. Nothing works for us. We want to start a job, that too don't work. We want a promotion, that too don't work. We want to find a man, that too don't work. Pastor, I'm 40 years old, I can't find a man. I don't know, every time somebody comes close to me, they run away. Maybe we'll start with the beetle nut that you eat. But it's more than that. And so you go in front of the mirror and you look at yourself. What am I doing wrong? Then you go for night prayer meeting. Because you want not to get prayed for. You want to see whether there's any very holy men that come there. And so you, you look there for help. Nothing's happening. You've been to the, so you leave that church. You see, you look at the advert in the paper that pastor is very handsome. Let me try there. And so you go there, you're looking for a man, but still no man wants you. And you blame yourself. You want you in a marriage, and your marriage is not working. You only fighting, fighting, fighting for no reason. When you come for counseling, I'm asking, what are you fighting for, Pastor? I don't know. Stupidest thing. We just argue. Bad luck. It's called B A D L E C. Old word. My granny and all used to use that. Bad luck. Some people that are very modern, they don't like to use that word. No, no such thing as bad luck. It is bad luck. Say it, not to me, to yourself. I'm going through something in my life 
that nothing seems to, wherever I put my finger, it either gets burnt or somebody pushes it away. Nothing works, Pastor. My friends, they're all working, only me. My friends, they're all happy married, only me. They're all buying cars, only me. I haven't got anything. And so you start to feel sorry for yourself. And then you start to look and hunt down every opportunity. to. Then sometimes people that are not Christian, they give their life to God because they're hoping something they don't know. Think of the people in the church got the same problem. So they fall from the, the fire into the frying pan. Not the other way now. They're getting a little bit safer. <laughs> but, but, but they're still cooking. And so they try every single thing. They don't know that there is a relationship between the headaches, the bad dreams, the, 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 ev- the body pains, everything they're going through is related to the bad luck. They don't know. Mm, they don't know. You see, because if the headaches and the bad dreams stop, the luck will change. Uh, um, say this again. These people are from Bedlam. <laughs> you see, except Pastor John and Pastor Anand. The, you see, if the headache stops, if the bad dream stops, hmm? if you stop seeing shadows, then the luck will change. Yeah? And these people are worse. Let's go this side. The luck will change. Let's see, let's see, let's test you, right? So, you know when I speak to people, when I look in the eyes, I can see the lights are off or on. Now, when the lights go off, I know you're from Vedlam. When the lights stay off, I know you're from Lady Smith. Some people are visiting from my hometown. The luck will change when those things stop. So, my goal is to stop those things. But we first need to know what's wrong before we stop those things. You understand? We have to know what's wrong. And if we don't know what's wrong... Those things will carry on and our lives will carry on down. Until such time, some of us become so fed up, we get suicidal. We just give up. So so we need to get to the bottom. And that's where I've been, to the bottom. To get to... God has actually blessed me with that information. Not because He likes how I look. It has nothing to do with my looks. Although... We we'll leave that sentence there. But he blessed me because it's a secret I want to share with you. Maybe you'll take it, maybe you won't. You've got to care for his people. You've got to care. You've got to care. And I'm not just saying that word lightly. I'm saying it, you've got to really care. And if you don't care, God will never give you that. That's called wisdom. That's not knowledge that you study in a Bible school or in a college or in a university. That's knowledge. God gives wisdom. Only He gives that. That's His gift to you. He will never give it to you. Wisdom is superior to knowledge. Way superior. Wisdom will only come to you if you care for His people. I'm just giving you that so that you'll know. If you really want the gifts of God for understanding and wisdom, you've got to care for His things. And I really, you know when I see you prosper, anyone, I get excited and I thank God. You don't know that. When I see you, tell me, Pastor, I got a new job. This is my prayer has been answered. I rejoice. Not because, I don't even tell you I rejoice. So it's not to impress you or to prove to you that I love you or I care for you. It's not for you. God knows my heart because that's how he blesses, just with the heart. He knows, he examines every single person. And so he blessed me with this wisdom. So I'm going to share this wisdom with you and those of you that are designed to receive it will receive it. Those of you that are not, unfortunately, I don't know what to do with you. You have to understand this. The human being is made of two parts. Now I'm going to simplify it Trust me, this took a 500-page thesis for me to write. The material that I wrote on this subject, they asked me permission to use it at Harvard and Oxford University. 
to teach the theological students. This part, the spiritual thing. I got my doctorate with this. This is something that I can't prove to you on a medical exam board. It's a spiritual matter. Right? So, the 500 pages, I'm going to try and, that's why I took the pulpit earlier. I'm going to try and do it and bring it down so that your child understands it. And I'm going to try and do it in one and a half hours. Just trust that God will give me that power. You are made of two parts. And as I taught the students that came to learn, Weeks and months ago, your two parts, you, your body is like a computer. Have you seen a computer sitting on a desk? It's got so much of power, but the thing you can, you, you all know, right? Because maybe you didn't operate the computer. Because, but if, if, you, if you punch in anything on the computer and you put a program in there, you punch in everything, Ravi will know, tire size, just punch in, punch in, hey, that's the size, that's the size, that's the car. So all the information is inside. In the hard drive. The hard drive. This is the hard drive. All the information is in the hard drive. Right? You got that? So that computer is very powerful. Powerful. It's got every can do anything you want it to do. Give you all the sorts of information. But unless Ravi goes and sits there and asks it the tire size and punches in, I want, I want tire size. They got full words on their buttons. I want. That computer will be blank. Somebody has to put it on. Somebody has to ask information. That's your spirit. The human spirit lives in an unseen world. Can you see the human spirit? Hey, can you see it? No. Can you see it? No. You can't see it. It, can't. it lives in an unseen world. It lives in the spirit world. That's why it's called spirit. Then your body lives in the seen world, the physical world that you can see. Right? So there's two different things. And when God made the computer, which is you, Ivan, just come stand here one second. This is the computer. This Munda, yeah? This head. This is the computer. This is the rest of it that listens to the computer. Right? This computer, if there's no spirit in it, it'll be dead. Did you go to a mortuary? If you went, some of your relatives might have passed away. Maybe their eyes are slightly open like that. If you lift up the eyes and look into the eyes, it's called the window to the soul. When you look inside, it's dead. It's blank. Because there's no soul inside here. Because the computer now can't function because the thing that lives inside is not there. Now listen to how, God, how powerful God is. Listen very carefully. Stand up and don't move. When this body here, this computer, it malfunctions and it can't work anymore. Do you know what God does? He takes the soul out of it. Because he is the giver of life. Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. He begins your life and he ends it. When this can't function anymore, he takes the soul out of it. Soul can't live in anything that cannot function. You understand that? Now, when you go to the mortuary and you look, if I look at you in your eyes, that's how I make out some people. I can check. I can make out whether you're happy just by looking at your eyes. You know, you know some religions, they wear this thing and they cover the bottom and they cover the top. Some different religions. You, how you think their husbands know when to obey their wives? Yeah. <laughs> I just have to look at my wife. You know when you're taking too long to do something or somebody's chatting with you. You know I'm having a chat now. I, look, I just have to look at the eyes. You know, I've got things to do. It's said with, my, with the eyes. I knew every word that was coming out all by looking at the eyes. Did you know that? You can, you can look, you can, you can read the eyes. I can give her the whole paragraph she was about to tell me just by looking at the eyes. Eyes, the soul. That's where the soul is. It's the, the eyes are the windows to the soul. It can tell you what kind of soul that is. It can tell you whether you're a crook. Some of you can't read anything. Anybody buys you and sells you. Thank you, Ivan. 
you are absolutely badda and baddi. You can't, you don't know. If you look at the eyes, it will tell you trust that person. It will tell you that person is sad. That person is depressed. That person is angry. It, you just look at the eyes. Next time you want to do anything to somebody, call them and say, look at me. And let them look, then decide what to do. But sometimes when, when, when this is it's very important to read because if you don't read, you won't know how to react. You'll say the wrong things at the wrong time. That's why when your wife is angry about, that's not the time to go and cause more problems and tell her my mother is coming home next weekend. No, that's not the time. Look at the eyes. Then you start problem because you can't read the soul. The soul gets angry. The soul gets jealous. The soul gets happy. The body is just a computer. It does nothing. You can't say my body is very happy. No, the soul is the one that gets affected. Now, that soul that drives the computer is called... Science calls it energy. Energy, according to Newton, cannot be created. You can't create energy. You know that. It's existing. You can't destroy energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So your soul can never be <laughs> Some of you are going to get this tomorrow. I said your soul. Sorry, Pastor John. I sprayed him a little bit. Let me go to the side. <laughs> your soul can never be destroyed. Say it with me. My soul can never be destroyed. Because it's energy. Don't have to say that. It's energy. <laughs> Energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can change from one form to another. It can't be destroyed. That's why when Jesus finishes the earth in judgment, he takes the souls that are not his and he throws it into outer darkness. He doesn't say, I'll chop it up and bury it. Because it can't die. It cannot be destroyed. So he throws it into outer darkness with the devil gnashing of teeth, all those things. So the soul has to live. Now, when your body dies, where does the soul go to? Anybody knows? No, it goes into the light. What light? Your, when your body dies, it goes into a place that the Jews call Sheol. And the Hebrews Use that word to describe the place of the, of the undead. I mean that the spirits, the disembodied spirits, the spirits that come out of a body, they disembodied, they live in that realm. It's called Sheol. The Greek people, they got cleverer, they changed their name. They said it's called Hades. Hades. It's the place where the spirits live. Hades and Sheol is the same thing. Different languages. Shoal and Hades is a place that is ruled by Satan. It has two different realms or places in Hades. One part of Hades is where it was safe for dead people to go before salvation. Now because your soul is dirty, it cannot go to God. Because you are a dirty person. By nature. There's not one of us can say that we haven't been dirty sometime in our life. Thinking bad things, hurting people, talking lies, making up stories, jealous of people. We be we, we dirty, man. I think we, we first thing we have to admit that we are not as clean as our bodies are. Some of you spend a lot of time. Some aunties, after they finish here, they're going to bath for very long. They think I'm talking about the body. No, I'm talking about the soul. Our souls are all dirty. We have sinned by nature. We get jealous when somebody improves sometimes. We get, we, we, we get hurt, we get angry, we want to spite people, we say nasty things. In different ways, we all, some of us are going to another level, we murder people. 
I know aunties murdered their husbands, they got the insurance money. True, I'm telling you. I got frightened. I told them, go away from the church, please. I thought they'll murder, you know. So people are, are dirty by nature. Now, any, now, you can't be dirty and then go and live with God. That's heaven. You can't. You can't. It's not possible, right? I think you'll know. You can't. I mean, how you imagine if God stands and you have to look in His eyes? How you look away? You will look away because you 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 cannot look in His eyes because everything about you is exposed to Him. So you 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 will never look in God's eyes, and so you can't be living in the same place as God. Imagine the rotters you have to live with here. If all of us go here over there, God will leave that place and come way down. <laughs> yeah. You know, imagine your neighbor, you have to live with the neighbor for eternity on top. Some of you that don't like them. How mad you'll get. So, God has to choose the nature of people that are willing to ask for forgiveness, that are humble, that 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 not offensive. Your, your nature has to change and then God calls you to his kingdom and then he asks you if you want forgiveness and when he forgives you, your, your whole life is cleansed. That means whatever you've done over and over again, it is cleansed so that when you stand before God, it's not because of your righteousness, it's because of his blood that you are clean. And when you go to heaven, now then when you clean, there's no grudge held against you. Like, oh, you've done, you have to give an account now. But the thing, this is what you've done wrong. You know, Christians don't go for judgment. Did you know that? They don't go for, Christians, properly saved Christian that got blood washed, go to heaven, there's no judgment. Because there's nothing held against you. For what you are going to be judged? The only judgment they go for is for the rewards. In fact, Jesus goes so far as to say that those that are saved are going to be sitting in the judgment seat with me. In other words, the people that gave you a hard time, when they appear, you're going to judge them. <laughs> How nice is that? Here's your chance. You can catch one pitchfork and pow, pow, pow. You can do it. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't do that. I'm say, but you're going to be sitting on the judgment seat with Christ. What a place to be. So, what Jesus is saying, you don't deserve salvation. But because you're my children, I love you. Change your heart. When you change, when you regret the things that you've done and said, and you humble yourself, you become a new creature. Old things pass away, all things become new, the blood wash you. So when you die, when your body doesn't function anymore, the soul gets lifted up and taken straight to heaven. Where it waits. Now before Jesus came, all the saints... All the people that died that were like good people, they couldn't go to heaven because there was no washing of blood. Now let me share this with you. Let's just read. Book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. <coughs> 1 Peter 3 18. Let's read there. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body but made alive by the Spirit. Through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Some scriptures got to the spirits in Hades. Who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. Jesus actually when he died, his spirit went down into Hades. Where... It's called Abraham's bosom, where the saints that died before Jesus, they were waiting for salvation. And Jesus went and he preached to those people, if you want to accept me, then you will go with me. Now, let me share with you, there was one story. Luke chapter 16 verse 23, I've got two Bibles, this is a very important message. One big Bible. One Bible where when Jesus speaks, everything turns red. Luke 16. Let's read. Matthew, Mark, Luke 16, 22. Let's read this here. 
1622. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this place. But Abraham said, Son, remember the good things and remember in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. Let's stop there. Just to show you that a place in Hades before Jesus came was called Abraham's bosom. In Hades, where the righteous, the saints were waiting for salvation. And when, when Jesus died, he went down into Hades and he offered those saints salvation. Those that accepted, they gone up. Right? Now, when you die, if you saved, you go straight up. Properly saved now. I can tell you 90% of Christians are not saved. They might think they saved. Let's read the book of John chapter 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John 5. I need to get the scriptures out of the way so that your mind starts to open up and understand. The book of John chapter 5, where we're reading, verse 25. Jesus spoke, now see the words turned red. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is. Listen, listen carefully. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Listen. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. And has given authority to him to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming, underline the next line, in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Verse 29. And come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Let's stop there. And what he's saying is, I hope I'm preaching to your level. I'm not going too high now. When you die, your spirit goes to, before Jesus died, it went to Hades and that was it. Went to Abraham's bosom where they were a little bit safe and went to the other part of Hades where they were tormented. When Jesus came, he went and preached to those in Hades that were in Abraham's bosom. They all gone to heaven. So now there is no Abraham's bosom. Right? There's no need to go there and wait. When you go to, when you die, if you're not gone to heaven, you're just in Hades. A world ruled by the devil. He owns that world, he rules that world. That world is very, very organized. Highly organized. He took his lead from God. Just how organized God is, that's how organized he is. He wants to replace God and overthrow God. So you think he's going to... So then when you, go to, when you go to these nightclubs where you see these people dancing in the dark, like, you think the devil likes dark? No. The Bible calls him angel of light. He's smart. Only mad people go in the dungeon. The devil is not in that dungeon. He lives in high places. So don't get confused. And so the devil rules this world. He organizes it. And so he's ready to take your soul. As soon as you die and if you're not saved, you go straight to his, his kingdom. You roam in Hades. Do you know Hades, how organized it is? The, the demons, one third of them that left heaven, they... They, they control, they, they arranged in different, I'm not preaching about angels, but I'm just going to give you a tip. They arranged in different ranks. Some are called principalities. Some are called powers. Principalities actually sit over the city and guard it so that evil wins. That's why when you try and get your plans passed, you try and get ticket fine, you do it for you, fighting with the authorities. Why do you come and put, they want to frustrate the human being. You'll see a little bit later when I preach to you why they do that. They control the authorities, principalities. Then there's powers just below them. Then there's the demons that go. And then there's those that control the dead people. Mm, this is a deep world. I can tell you now, if you had a pee, -pee when you die and you go in your, if your spirit man had a pee, -pee you'll pee, pee everywhere. Because it is frightening. Very frightening. You'll wet all over Hades. If they could let any... 
liquid out of you. Maybe even if you ate food, the other opening will open and your whole, you'll have diarrhea all over Hades. Because it is frightening. You know what scary movie? Scary movie is not even scary. When you go into that world, listen to me, I've indulged, I've, I've, I've met angels in that world, I've encountered things, which I'm writing a book shortly, it will, it'll try, I'm trying to publish that, it will be finished shortly, but in that book it contains all the experiences that I've had. Once I went to Johannesburg, my mum was not well. And uh, before this, let me explain to you, this was way before I started, or way after I started the ministry and preaching. When I went into my closet to pray, have you, you know when you encounter demons and spirits, when people are possessed with them, you know how, how dangerous that is? You can't go tackle, that thing will clap you. Hey, that thing will jump into you. So you've got to be very smart before you deal with those things. It's a, it's a, those are powerful things. And so when I went down, I went to so many places to pray and I was, you know, I'll be honest with you. When I started, I used to be scared. I never used to show it on my face. But when I started off, it was scary. Very scary. There's some aunties. One auntie, when I went to pray for her, she took a whole gown and put it over my head. I was underneath her. <laughs> I don't know what I would have died of. <laughs> and you know what she was doing with my head? She squashed it with her knees. And my ears were ringing. Hey. I went into my prayer room before that and I said, Lord, make people clean at least. You know what I'm saying? When I... No, no, I didn't say that. I'm lying, I'm lying. I said, see, because auntie never had a bath look like for years, like days, the spirit came, you know. But, but, the, but I never said that. I said, Lord, never mind. Wherever you take me, I'll go. That's why I said to you, <laughs> that's why I said to you, when places are dark, don't think the devil is over there. <laughs> I went, listen, I didn't say that now. Just joking with you. I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, your warrior angel. You know, Jesus was talking about Michael, the strength of Michael. And he says, Luke 10, 17, he says, when Jesus, when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he says, you know how powerful Michael is? He says, when, when, when there was war between the devil and, and God, Michael, the archangel, got rid of the devil. It was like lightning. It wasn't one month, one week. You know, like a, come on, box you up. No, it was shoo, was finished. That's how powerful Michael is. So I said, Lord, if you have Michael, please send him with me. I don't want to be attacked like that again. You know, so I went to Johannesburg when my brother phoned me. She says, my mom is very not, not well at all. So I went there. Apparently, her hands were, one hand, not both, one hand was swollen. Her fingers, beloved, her fingers were so thick. My mom is late now. So thick it was. Thick. You, there was no gap between the fingers. It was gone thick. And my brother was going to the doctor every day and giving an injection that cost 80 rand a day. That was like, talking like about 14, 15 years back now. And, uh, and the injection was costing this boy. And he was like not working, you know, I mean, a top job or something. So he says, you know what? Come and pray for uh, mother. We call her mother. You know, come pray for mother. I think something's wrong with her. So I went up there. It was cold in Johannesburg. My Nicole was born that time only. It was more than that then. My two boys were not with us. Just Nicole and I. Nicole was a baby. We went, jumped into, went into that house. I just entered the room. My mother was sitting on the bed and her face changed. Who I could see the spirit. Face went like a baboon, you know. Change. I'm telling you, you know, like it's impossible to make a face like that. I mean, you can try, but you can't. The eyes went to up, the face went to and I could see the spirit like, what are you doing here? Hey, a voice went to like a man. What are you doing here? You know, 
Allah, I didn't even have a cup of tea. I just went to see how my mother is. That thing changed now. That thing is telling me, I know you. I know you. Leave me alone. And that thing was waking up. My poor mother, she's so short. She was coming to dawn with me. Now. She was waking up to come, you know, to me. Yeah, face change. You know, if you see, it, like, when you see these secular movies and you get frightened, right? When they take the teeth, it's gone like that. My teeth never go like that, but her face went like, coming for me now. She was halfway on the bed, halfway on the bed, coming towards me as I entered the door. But this time I was not frightened or anything there, but I, I had it under control. And so the archangel that I asked for, I didn't ask again when I went, I just walked in. When I walked in, she looked at me, she got angry, she was coming to uh, fight with me and, you know, like, grab me. Like, and all of a sudden she looked up. It's always on my right hand side. She looked up and her face changed again with fear. And she pointed to him and she says, what is he doing here? By this time I knew who she was talking about. So I just wanted to play. And I said, who's that? He says, Michael, Michael, the warrior, the warrior. What is he doing here? She wants to know. I said, don't worry, he always goes with me. Not even 10 seconds. Her hand went totally flat. And I'm, my children are my, I swear on their life. I'm sharing with you something that's not fake, it's not made up, it is genuine. Her hands, like a balloon deflated right in front of my eyes, I was shocked. Even me as a pastor that's seen miracles, I was shocked. Her hand, fingers deflated right in front of me, her countenance, her spirit was gone. I didn't even have to cast it out, it was gone. Just because I had this angel right by me, it was frightened. And now, when my relatives that live in Pretoria also saw, they were sickly in their own way, you know, leg not coming, hand not coming, head paining, marriage, this, that. When they saw that, they all came way to Durban after I left. They wanted prayer also. And you know, connections too, you can't say no, you know. But I said no. <laughs> I have to when, 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 listen, when you pray for people, you have to know their heart before you pray. You have to know whether it's going to last or it's not going to last. You have to know, you can't throw your pearl to the swine. This gift that I have, I paid a price. I slept on the floor. I ate peanut butter. That peanut too was out of the butter. I only ate the butter. I ate brown bread. My, ch my child slept on a, on a city that was broken. We went to bed with no food. I held on. We had no electricity. One day our lights got cut. We lived with like bare nothing for four years or so. The price I paid to stick into this, God needed to test to see what are you here for, the money or are you here for saving people? And I think that test I passed because I, it's, it's a process. It's a learning. It's a, so this price I paid, I'm not going to just throw it. No, no, no. When I see your heart and I know that you're genuine and you're really genuine, I'll give you my best. I will go the extra mile over and above. Pastor Aaron will tell you he's with me when we pray for people. We sometimes take hours just with one person. Why, they, Why do you take so long? I said, well, I don't. Sometimes you feel led to help people because you can see they're genuine. They, they, their hearts are in the right place. I'll go. 